happy to have on two folks who are building something called CONCAT, Connecticut Center for Arts and Technology. Introducing Eric Clemens, the CEO, and Odell Cooper, Director of Culinary Arts. All right, we're going to start out. What is CONCAT? I want folks to know what this is. Well, first, thanks for having us on. You and betcha. I, I really appreciate this. So, Connecticut Center for Arts and Technology is a three prong approach to uh, job, job security, academic achievement, and entrepreneurship. We have job training programs in medical billing and coding, phlebotomy, and culinary. now in culinary. Uh, based we also, in New Haven. Yes, based in New Haven. And only about two to three years old. Yes, three years old. We were fully operational in 2012. It took a year to build. 2011, myself, Bill Strickland, who we replicated his model from Pittsburgh, and my board chair, Carlton Highsmith, uh, built the place. Took a year, 2011. 2012, we opened. and. This young lady joined me in about, <laughs> I think, May 2012. How did you find Odell? And why did you oh, also well, put in the question. culinary arts? Because, I mean, they're great. Yeah. But why did you feel the need to, to do that along with the arts and technology oh, to get foodies in there? That's a great question. So I, I think Odell found me. I did. Right? <laughs> and, I, um, right well, perhaps you can <laughs> tell the story then, Odell. I was unemployed. Yeah. Okay. I was unemployed. I um, had left Monterey Baptist Church and I was looking for work. And I was unemployed for three months and I was just consulting different places. And I knew June was the last month that I had before I didn't have any money to pay my bills. Mm. And I interviewed with Eric and Genevieve and he waited a long time to call me back and I got nervous because I'm what like... What was the deal there, Eric? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> so I, what I was doing is I, I wanted to break up the job. Yeah. Uh, it was called, the, the job structure was really uh, for her to run our adult programs. Right. And I thought she just had a unique talent with people. And so what I did was I, I created a job for her talent. And so her first job with us was Career Pathways, Manager of Career Pathways, where mm -hmm. she could work with our adult mm -hmm. students, really doing life skill uh, and job placement. And so it, that was my way. What, what was important to me also was her story. Uh, so when, when I interviewed her, it really wasn't about her resume. Her resume got her the interview. She got herself the job. Mm -hmm. And so her story was so impactful, and the fact that she was unemployed really appealed to me because I made sure that everyone I hired at CONCAT from inception was unemployed. I didn't hire anyone who had a job. All right, let's talk about the model. Mm -hmm. Why did you feel the need to get this going in the city of New Haven? What was it lacking and what are you providing for middle school kids, mm -hmm. students, and also high school students? What was missing? Why did you feel so push to put this together? So the, the entire program? You betcha. All right, so we wanted to address the uh, unemployment rate, high unemployment rate in New Haven and Connecticut especially. And so we want to do real job training, market relevant job training. So for a year we did feasibility. And we went to Yale New Haven Hospital, who was the largest employer in New Haven, asked them what is market relevant, what is their immediate need. They indicated medical billing and coding mm. and phlebotomy. And mm. so quite Drawing naturally, blood exactly, draw, exactly. Know. And so quite naturally, we design training programs based on Yale New Haven Hospital's needs, so there's a direct pathway from CONCAT to Yale New Haven Hospital. They're a huge partner so for us. So you're bringing the kids right along. Absolutely. And with that is culinary arts. Yes. What are you seeing your kids? It's, it's potential. Mm -hmm. One of the questions that Eric asked me was not who we're hiring, who we're able to recruit for the program, but who are we not able to recruit. So we went back, we, looked, we took a look at the numbers, and we weren't able to retain men or men who were ex-offenders mm -hmm. because we can't place them in employment in the medical field. So those were our two largest population that we could not place in employment. So culinary arts was the best opportunity for that mm -hmm. because people like to do hands-on. They like to cook. And if you have a criminal background, then we can place you more so in culinary than we can in medical building and coding or the, or the, or the phlebotomy field. And, and another logic point was the fact that there's enormous amounts of restaurants here. And so job placement was more really important. More than 100, important. I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And so we did a, a, another feasibility study for about six, seven months, wrote a white paper about the need for culinary, uh, this culinary academy to fill the vacant places in restaurants. And so that was another logic point, is, was the open jobs, and also, as, as Odell said, reentry. Where are you based? 
So where do people go to get a hold of you? Good question. We are based in Fort Science Park, New Haven, Connecticut. We also have a satellite space at Lincoln Bassett School where we built the CONCAT Center mm -hmm. where we're addressing the needs of parents in that school and also that community in New Hallville. Uh, we are implemented our arts program as well for grades three to six. So we have two places now, not just Science Park, but also at Lincoln Bassett School. When I brought you guys on, I said, we're going to get some information out here about mm -hmm. CONCAT because I don't think en enough people know about it. Yeah. And again, what do you need? Oh. So folks listening can <laughs> say, you know what? I've got some stuff that they can have, or, mm -hmm. or I have some resources. So what do you need to further the culinary arts? Well, I love that question. So well, I have I'm to so ask. glad. <laughs> love that question. One, what we need is smallware, pots and pans, utensils. We need that portion of our culinary program. How much do you need? We, I can tell you, we need eighteen thousand dollars worth. <laughs> Which is so pots and pans, pans and, lids and, and, and pots and pans and hotel pans and quarter inch pans, frying pans, spatulas, cutting boards. We need everything for a kitchen, so it's called smallware. Glasses, plates, we need it because we are opening up a cafe. Mm -hmm. And the adults in the program are going to cook and open up and serve in the cafe. So we're going to be serving the public as well. And will this cafe be in Science Park? It will. Yes. It's, it's downstairs. We have 9,000 square feet that's in construction wow. now. Uh, as Odell said, the cafe will be at three business lines, uh, events, catering, and retail, open to the public. Yes. The revenue we make in the cafe goes back into Odell's program to keep it going. So. So not only just smallware, you know, I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a big picture person. Uh, we need funding to keep this thing going. I believe that uh, CONCAT is really transforming the landscape in New Haven, especially in New Hallville, where uh, that is probably the most marginalized and depressed uh, community in New Haven. And so in order for us to continue this trajectory that I see uh, that CONCAT has, we need funding, we need help uh, to continue this, this work. Eric, were you sitting around one day doing your day job and you saw this model? You said it, when, it was in Pittsburgh? Yeah, yeah. And said, I need to bring this here. Where, where else no. is this model? Actually, actually uh, the model came to me. I got a call from uh, Carlton Highsmith, who was my board chair, uh, incredible man, and, uh, and Bill Strickland, and, and Will Ginsburg, who is the head mm -hmm. of the Community Foundation. And they had this idea that uh, to bring this, this model to New Haven and was asking me to, to build and run it. And so uh, I met with them, I met with Will first, and I met with Carlton and Bill together and for three hours. And what I realized by meeting those two men and talking with them was the possibilities of my own life. You know, looking at them, I could be them. And, and it allowed me to make a greater impact in terms of helping people. And so that was what was really um, compelled me. That's what really compelled me to, to take this, this on. Where are you getting the funding so far? Private donations? Private where's donations. It, where's uh, it coming a from? A lot of our uh, funding comes from foundations, uh, about 75%, and 25% comes from private donations. And because it's been so successful, those foundations and that uh, private giving, they have recommitted uh, to CONCAT. Odell, you were out of a job when Eric hmm. brought you in. <laughs> yes. You understand from the very foundation of what CONCAT is doing because you're bringing the kids along. Mm -hmm. You're trying to give them life skills. Um, even if you have life skills sometimes, it doesn't work out so great. So how do you relate to the folks, the kids that you're bringing on from your life experiences? Mm -hmm. You get to a point where you're just, your back is against the wall. And how do I make a decision? How do you, in this population, how do you not make the wrong decision and end up in the wrong place? How do you not make desperate decisions? So we bring in adults who have children. Um, they, are, they can run their families, but they can't find employment. And they're self-doubting of themselves. So how do you reinforce their self-esteem? How do you give them hope? How do you help them to trust you? It's about building trust and respect. And the adults come through our program, their heads are down, and they're not sure if they can trust us or how they can rely on us. And once the partnership is formed, it is remarkable. Give me an example of what you have turned out, where you say at the end of the day, we saved something here. Yeah. There's so many there's stories. There's, 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 there's a, 
I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm my favorite. <laughs> we had a young man in the program who we knew was an ex-offender and coming into the phlebotomy program. And he was forced to go back to leave the program and to go to work because he had childcare situations. So the courts were forcing him to leave the program. We knew if he stayed that he would make it. We wrote letters um, to try to get the judge to, you know, let the young man stay in the program. So finally he got an appeal, whatever happened, he was able to stay in the program. But then he's working late nights trying to hustle, trying to make money because he has responsibilities. Sure. He finished the program. He went on his externship. Yale loved him. Yale hired him. However, um, we had some issues where we couldn't quite get him employed. He met with Mr. Clemens. He pleaded his case. He said, could you please write me a letter and let Yale know that I'm committed, I'm here, this is the job that I want to do. Mm -hmm. Mr. Clemens wrote the letter and Yale hired him part-time. He was, he's still working there today. He came in three weeks later, matter of fact, three weeks ago, he mm -hmm. came back. Mm -hmm. He said, I now have a job at Danbury Hospital. They hired me, despite of my background, because they said, if Yale hired you, we can hire you. So now he is a phlebotomist, he's certified, he's taking care of his family, and he is working. I th Amen. I think, yeah, I think what's even more important than just job training and job placement or even our arts program is to get people to believe that there is something greater than the conditions that they see, yeah. right? And so this young man and many others, because of their time at CONCAP, because of their experience with Odell and the other team members, not only do they finish something, because a lot of the folks who come to CONCAP have never finished anything. So not only do, do they finish, but they believe in the idea that there's something greater for them than what they see every day. And that, that transformation is what it's all about. So you're in the schools and you're also catering to adults that need that second chance. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. For folks who are watching this, who are you bringing in and how many do you bring in at a time? Oh, that's a good question. So we're bringing in um, folks who are unemployed, underemployed, who have little hope, mm -hmm. who have really never finished anything. These are adults. Uh, we're bringing in um, most often young people who are in our arts program who have been uh, um, identified as underachieving in school, uh, who don't finish homework or do their homework. Those are the folks that we serve. There's a spark of potential in, in all of them. And they've come through for the last three years in droves. And, and now we're about, what, 68% job yeah. placement. Mm -hmm. Is right. there a cost or is this getting picked up by somebody? There's no oh. cost. There's no cost. There's no, There's no cost. cost. The only cost is the commitment. And we like commitment and accountability. That's right. Accountability. That's we right. have our we have our core values. We teach our core values throughout the program. And for the adult to, I mean, you can teach anyone to medical building coding. Mm -hmm. You can teach anyone how to be a phlebotomist and to cook. But the work ethics, yeah. the accountability of self, how you show up, when you show up, that's something that we reinstill in them because. It's lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The art of work ethics is lost. Yeah. So we reinforce it. The big game plan, what do you oh, see gosh, are, five, eight years we down We are talking the road. about that now. <laughs> well, let's, let's get it down there. Eric. So I'm it? really thinking about the future of CONCAP. Uh, I, we're being asked to be a part of uh, the plans of other larger institutions, and we want to leverage the success that we had in these last three years. And we you're are liberty to say which institutions at I, this point. I, not yet. You're in talks. Not yet. We're in talks. Let's, let's say. And so, um, you know, again, we've done all of this, and, and I, I, at the risk of sounding pretentious, we've done all of this in three years. We're expanding. We're in another space, and now we are thinking about scaling this model. You know, how do we help more people? Mm -hmm. That's the essential question. Absolutely. How do we make a greater impact and leverage the success that we've had these last three years? Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in September with our board of directors, is uh, we are part of the social contract, right? So if we have, then we should do. And so how, what do we do and how do we do it? And so we're looking to scale this model. All right. If somebody wants to get a hold of you guys, what's the best way to do that? Call us. Yeah. Call us. Come in. Um, people are coming into the building all the time asking questions. They're calling. They're on our Facebook and they're on our website. But most of the time, just call and any of us can answer a question. Yeah. 203-823-9823 uh, two, two is, is our, our number. 
or www.concat.org. And, um, you know, this is just not just an organization. This is a movement. <laughs> you know, this is a movement of, of, of really helping people and getting them to see something uh, greater for them. That's what this is really about. Well, New Haven is lucky to have you both. Thank Eric you. Clemens and Odell Cooper, CONCAT, get a hold of you guys, and you're changing yes. the world. And Thanks, I appreciate Can I that. add one more you piece? You sure can. You said, what do we need? Externships. We mm -hmm. are, I am oh. looking for, to partner with restaurants, bakers, um, meat places, because any adults that we that get coming in to the program are going to have their gift and skills in terms of where we want to place them. So we're looking for, I'm looking for those partnerships mm -hmm. okay. that we can place when, in from here to Greenwich yeah. to New York because they can catch Metro. So, but we're looking to place our adults, especially who don't have transportation, in New Haven as well. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're looking for. And I love that you said that. Here's what I need. Here's what I well, need. Well, thank you both Thanks, so Anne. much thank for being on. And I us. look to talk to you in five years from now and the oh, program is great. huge. That's great. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Spend all night kissing and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution and find a piece of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep locked in the grocery store of the mind. Just the same time, skip right ahead in the nice ride. The harder we look, the 